Welcome to another procedural texturing tutorial. In this one, we're going to be talking about coordinate systems, how we can use them, how we can make them. Let's get stuck in. There are three main nodes that contain coordinate information, and these are the UV map node, texture coordinate node, and the geometry node. Generally, we use the texture coordinate node or sometimes the UV map node if we just want the UV map, but all three of these contain information that we can use. So these are a little bit confusing, and I've had quite a few people ask about them. I'm just going to run through all of these options, show what they do, and which ones we can use for coordinate systems. Now, what is a texture coordinate? Texture coordinates tell Blender where to position colors on the mesh. Coordinates are position information and therefore vectors, right? They contain X, Y, and Z information, with one exception. To make sure that we're able to manage this information without different axes getting mixed up, we store this information as R, G, and B channels, red, green, and blue channels. Now, if we have a look at our axes in Blender, you can see that our X axis is red, our Y axis is green, and our Z axis is blue. And this corresponds exactly with how we store our texture coordinates. So each point in the coordinate system has its own color, which is made up of the RGB values. And we can interchange RGB and XYZ here. So if we have a point in this generated vector, and I'll explain what each of these are properly in a moment. But if we have a point in the bottom left here, this is point zero, zero, zero in terms of our vector position. And if we store this as color information, so I'm just gonna add an input RGB. So if I go into the RGB here and I set these all to zero, you can see that we're outputting black, right? There is no value in this bottom left-hand corner. If I go directly above it, where we have only increased the Z value, so on this cube using generated vectors we have one being at the top so now our vector is 0 0 1 if I change my blue up and you can see that we've got that blue if I then move along this edge in the X direction then we're going to be changing to 1 0 1 we haven't gone anywhere in the Y yet if I increase this then we get a magenta color and you can see that this corner is magenta so now if we go back in space in the Y direction so this corner we're gonna have 1 1 1 which is white pure white now obviously a coordinate space can go higher than one and lower than zero, but our screens are not gonna express that range properly. In Filmic View Transform, which is Blender's default, then you can set that under your render settings, color management, and it's down here, View Transform. I set this to standard, you can see that the white is absolutely one, so standard has a proper range of zero to one, and then it will clip anything outside that range, and Filmic goes much higher in the white range. So this is why when you look at a coordinate system, you see all these colors, but actually in terms of them being stored as RGB values, it kind of makes sense. So if we have a look at the UV map here, I've got plain up here above and I'm using a plane because a plane fills up our UV space and a UV space has a range in X and Y from 0 to 1. UV spaces are the exception to the rule that every space contains X, Y and Z information. A UV space only contains X and Y information. If I add a converter separate X, Y, Z and you can see that our X gradient increases horizontally and our Y gradient increases vertically in terms of our UV space. So as I mentioned before, with these being stored as values in color channels, this is why we end up with a gradient. So here is like 0 0.05, and that's why it's very dark. Whereas if we go right up to the top to like 0 0.9, then it is much brighter. And this axis runs all the way across the whole thing linearly because there is no change in any other axis. It is only changing in one direction. Because of how we're storing all of this information as color channels, we can affect the information as if it's color. So we can use things like the mix RGB node and start mixing colors that way. So let's have a run through of what our different options are here. Just to explain things a bit more clearly, I'm using a principled volume node just so that we can see the space three dimensionally. If I put a UV map onto this, it's gonna go black, but that's because UV map is only talking about surface information and there's no way for us to express this in volume. So the UV UV map node, by default, it contains the same information that the UV output from the texture coordinate node has. However, it also allows us to use multiple UV maps. So if I add this one, we have UV map 001, I can select that here. And if I look at the UV space, you can see that in UV map, we have this kind of cross and UV map 001, we have a different layout. And this is gonna help you when you do stuff like baking, if you need different textures and different UV map. The texture coordinate node has a few different options here. So we have generated, generated uses what we call the bounding box of the object. If I add a monkey, Suzanne takes up a certain amount of space. She's a certain width and a certain depth as well. If you would like to view her bounding box on this orange one, we can set the viewport display, check this box. The bounds is the smallest box that can fit the mesh 
inside it is the bounds of the object that we are taking into account when we are looking at generated coordinates. So from the bottom front left is 0, 0. Then we go up in the z direction, horizontally in the x direction, and also front to back in the y direction. The important thing to remember when we are looking at generated is that we have a 0 to 1 range in each of these axes. So our texture coordinates have a different scale in each axis. So you can see that if I put in this Voronoi texture, I've just got it feeding through a color ramp on the cube where we have the same value X and Y, we have circles, but on the monkey where it is shorter vertically, we have ellipses. And that is caused by generated being shorter vertically than it is horizontally. So that is worth taking into account. When we do not use any input to a node, it defaults to generated, except from if you're using an image texture node that will default to UV. The next one on our list is normal. What the normal is doing is it's outputting the vector normal to a surface. And a, if we have a surface looking top down on it like this, the normal is the vector which points out at 90 degrees. This top surface of the cube pointing up it is completely blue, and that is because it is pointing straight up in a Z position. Negatives are black, but that doesn't mean there's no information. It just means that we're using negative vectors, which do not get represented visually, at least on our screens. The information is, however, still there. And you can see on the monkey where we have slightly different angles, we're getting slightly more complex vectors but these are just vectors saved as RGB information and so we're getting different colors on different faces. Next one we've talked about is UV. This will just use the default UV map. The one that comes out of this texture coordinate node will be whichever one has the camera icon next to it. So you cannot define multiple UV maps with the texture coordinate node, only with the UV map node. Following UV, we have object. Object coordinates have a zero zero point in the exact position of the origin of our shape. Object coordinates are influenced by object scale and object rotation. So if I rotate this, you can see that our X and our Y is moving. If I increase the scale of this in the Z axis, then we're not changing the maximum value. However, if I apply rotation and scale, those things do actually change. So if I drop this right back down and apply the rotation and scale, this will drop the maximum amount. If you are using object coordinates and your texture looks strangely deformed, likely that you just need to apply the scale of your object. Next up, we've got camera coordinates. And camera coordinates are quite easy to understand. Essentially, the origin of the coordinate space is centered where your camera is, where you're viewing from. And they are orientated so that the direction that you are looking in is exactly in the z-axis. One way for me to demonstrate this is if I just add a plane, scale it up a little bit there, and give it the same material. If I use a converter vector math on here, and set this to length. It's going to give me a gradient out from the origin. And then if I add a converted math and set this to be modulo, and you can see that this is concentric spheres away from the point of view. So if I just go back to this, you can see that the center of my view is blue. So we're looking at a positive Z direction. And to the right, we have increasing X and up we have increasing Y. So that's camera coordinates. After camera, we have got window. There is no Z coordinate. All it is using is the space that is actually looking into your 3D scene. And if you have a camera, I just add one now, the camera will then define what is or isn't in the view. And you can see that there is a zero zero point just at that bottom left hand corner and things down and left of that appear black. After window, we have reflection. Reflection is slightly more complex. So reflection, if you have your surface like this, you are looking at it in this direction and the reflection ray comes out like this. And this is 90 degrees here and this angle theta and this angle theta away from the normal, they equal each other. So it's the direction that you look at and then how it's being reflected on the other side, this angle out here, this is your reflection vector. So where we are looking down here, we're looking in the negative Z. So the vector that comes off this is going to be pointing in the positive X and the negative Z. And that's why we have a red value there. And if we look up slightly, then we're starting to get positive Z included. And that is why we get a magenta color. So that's reflection. So now getting down onto the second node, the geometry node, we have position information. This looks the same as object. 
right? Position an object, at least on our cube. But you can see that Suzanne up here does not have the same result. When we look at object, it is centered on the origin, but the position, we can see that this is centered on the world origin. It also does not matter if you've got a different scale, because this doesn't look at your object scale at all. And if you move this, it takes on the point information of that position data. So I find position really useful when we're doing things like spreading your texture across multiple objects in different places, but you want the texture to be somewhat continuous. And therefore, if you just use this position information, say so using the world coordinates. Now, normal for your geometry, I'm just going to right click smooth. So normal for both geometry and texture coordinates are the same. However, we do have two more options here. We have tangent and tangent is 90 degrees to a normal, which is to say that it is in line with the surface. If I have a circle, the normal would be pointing straight out from that, but the tangent of a point is going to be where it is dead in line with it. And this going towards a positive vector is what we can see is happening here. After tangent, we have true normal. And you can see, even though we have shaded Suzanne smooth, when we look at normal coordinates, we see the smooth normal and when we look at true normal we are just looking at the raw mesh information nothing to do with shaded smooth normals or weighted normals or anything this is just the pure what does the mesh surface look like incoming this is another really useful one and it works similarly to reflection but if this is what reflection ray looks like then our incoming ray we're looking in this direction the incoming ray is what is coming straight back at us so if we look straight on at this at this surface and our camera currently has a a position from the surface coming out towards us of positive z and if we come this way then we have positive z and a positive x and if we go behind then we have all three positive underneath we have negative z so that is incoming uh, we also have parametric here and parametric splits every face into a triangle which is what's happening behind the scenes anyway renderers are always triangulating our mesh but we just don't see that on our editable mesh so the issue with using these coordinates you might think well they've got x and y but on some of the faces they are at 90 degrees from one another and on other faces they are at 45 degrees from one another and that is not going to give you a good result there are reasons why you would be using parametric but it's a very specific use case we then have these three gray sockets we have back facing which is basically a black and white mask when we look inside at faces which are pointing backwards we get a one which just says that, that is the back facing base pointiness is referring to how angled the points are so in internal corners you will have a lower value and on external corners you will have a higher value and then we have random per island this will give you a random value per mesh island so even within one object you can see that Suzanne has separate eye meshes and these are getting a random value this option here this random per island only works with with cycles not with EV. So that's just been a run through of these different coordinate systems generated. We have 0 to 1 in our x, y and z ranges of our bounding box. UV considers our UV map. Object considers the 0, 0 position of our mesh to be the origin of our texture coordinates and uses world space scaled by our object scale. Camera, window and reflection. These are all to do with how we look at the mesh. Position is just world coordinates, normal, tangent and true normal. These are just the direction of the surface and you can't really use these as coordinate systems and they're very useful for things like masking incoming again another one that is just talking about how we look at the mesh and finally parametric which gives us a uv per triangulated face one of the really great things about how we store our coordinate information being as it is gradients stored in rgb channels aside from how easy it is for us to edit them it also means that it's very easy for us to generate uv spaces however we want if you find later on in a material you need to be generating a UV space so that you can put an image on. We did this for the herringbone tutorial. Then as long as you can generate a gradient and you combine it with a combine XYZ node, then you can put an image onto that. It just becomes a case of how can you modify gradients to do what you want them to do, to look how you want them to look and how can you manipulate that information. And that's really all we do when we do procedural materials. I hope this made sense. It can take a little bit of time to get your head around if it's new to you. So do make sure that you understand what the different outputs of the texture coordinate and geometry node do and when you can use them. The key takeaway from this today is that everything that we do with procedural textures, generating shapes, generating interesting displacement, all comes from modifying gradients that we take from texture coordinates. And as long as you understand that the gradients, the values that are actually inherent to the color, then it becomes much easier for you to start changing how your gradients are being mapped. Manipulating coordinates is the cornerstone of procedural texturing.
So I hope this has been useful. Hope you've enjoyed it. And I'll catch you next time.